at the stroke of the midnight hour, when the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. Our beloved leader, Bapu as we called him, the father of the nation, is no more. मेरे प्यारे देशवासियों नमस्कार आप सब लॉकडाउन में इस मन की बात को सुन A very good evening to you, Professor, and I welcome you to the common room. It's nice to be here, Puneet. I want to use this time to start a discussion on the continuing relevance of radio as a medium of communication, especially for the poor, and how it plays an important role in their empowerment. The internet is increasingly becoming the main source of information, and for many of us in urban spaces, especially the youth, who might even think of radio as some relic of the past, are disconnected with this continuing relevance of radio as a means of communication. So, Professor, you have been working in the radio field for a long time and in advocating for the Indian community radio sector. How relevant do you think radio is in modern India? Well, personally speaking, I think radio is extremely relevant in modern India, and uh, we tend to mentally discount radio as a medium very often. In terms of sheer physical reach, it continues to be one of the most widely accessed media in India. The public broadcaster All India Radio's network continues to cover. nearly 99% of the indian landmass in terms of sheer coverage and more than 95% of the indian population for a large proportion of india radio continues to be the primary medium of access because a it's cheap to access radio continues to be accessed on very simple very easily available radio sets which cost as little as 50 rupees in the current day and age it's very economical to access and very importantly radio is a medium you can access and use while doing other things which is actually a reality for many indians especially marginalized communities as well as poor communities in this country who cannot dedicate time to access a medium but tend to listen to media or tend to use media while doing other things their daily chores housewives doing their housework farmers doing the tilling in the farm personally i've seen farmers with radios tied to the horns of their bullocks plowing their fields that's something obviously that's not going to be very comfortable doing with television basically radio has a wide reach because for people who cannot afford to buy advanced technology or people who are not well versed in the english language they cannot access contents on mainstream internet i want to now bring the discussion to community radio for the benefit of our listeners can you explain what community radio is and then tell us about how it serves as a major tool of empowerment for not only the poor and the marginalized but also the inaccessible uh, let me also respond to a point you just raised as well before i go on to community radio which is that yes a key feature of radio is usually its hyper locality because typically community radio stations cover about a 15 km radius that means a lot of people are able to listen to content in the language that they speak every day at home over radio in a way that television does not afford and the internet does not afford the internet especially is heavily biased in favor of english language speakers and there's an old saying in hindi that says the language and the water in india change every 20 kos or 20 miles and there's really no other medium at a local level except community radio which can actually allow you to speak in all these languages so that you can actually like i said access information in the language you speak at home which is most familiar to you so coming to community radio community radio is actually well radio that's owned managed and run by communities as opposed to let's say public broadcasting which is typically done by a foundation or a grouping which is set up at the state level or private broadcasting which is typically managed by corporate entities of various kinds So in India for example community radio is typically set up by civil society organizations trust societies who are working with communities directly at the grassroots or by educational institutions like colleges or uh, by schools for the students who are studying in those institutions or for the communities that live close by typically the idea behind community radio is 
communities and individuals prioritize their information needs and can then begin to talk about the things that are important to them rather than consuming information that is prioritized and decided by either corporate entities which are based in metro cities or even further away. So the idea behind community radio is to create a third tier of media which empowers local communities, which empowers people at the grassroots, empowers people who would otherwise not have access to the media. A lot of us may come from more privileged sections of society, but even many of us will not get the opportunity to go on one of the mainstream radio stations or television stations to speak up and be a part of content. However, a community radio station decidedly reverses that entire structure by allowing anybody to walk into a local studio, to participate in discussions, to respond to current discussions that are happening. That's an important concern in an era where access to media and the digital divide because of access to the internet or lack of access to the internet is, is deepening. Also during the COVID-19 lockdown, community radio stations played an instrumental role in broadcasting government guidelines and regulations to their communities and helping them understand what they meant. An example that comes to mind is the radio station called Gurgaon Ki Awaz, which prevented migration of the workers living in its vicinity by providing them with correct and relevant information from government authorities. So based on this, do you think community radio stations are essential to our society? Oh, very much so. During the last three months, Community radios across the country have done exemplary work in interpreting the rules that have been created during the lockdown, interpreting the information that has been shared by the government and uh, underlines again the importance of keeping community radio involved at the time of major health crisis like the one we are faced with right now because of the sheer presence and the sheer trustworthiness that they reflect in the minds of the citizens that they are reaching. Building on this broad understanding of radio and community radio, I want to now bring the discussion to a certain legislation of the government of India, which according to many is a big hindrance to freedom of speech in the country. There is a blanket ban on broadcast of news by any private FM channel or community radio stations by the government of India. What they can do is they can broadcast any news bulletin by the All India Radio and they can defer it by a maximum of 30 minutes. And this legislation has been widely contested in the civil society and is referred by many people as unconstitutional. So do you think that this ban on broadcast of news by channels is justified? Well, let's start by saying that the very idea of hyperlocal radio is that information should be shared and can be shared over it at a local level. Given that, it should be obvious that news and the broadcast of news is an essential function within the community radio space. Because at a national level or at a regional level, it is impossible to filter and bring relevant information about what's happening at the local level to a radio station or to a TV station. So that said, in India anyway, and India is among the few countries in the world, if not the only one, where news on private radio or community radio is banned, the control over news has traditionally been by the public broadcaster ever since independence. This is actually a remnant or a hangover from the colonial era when it was important for the government to be in control of narratives during the independence movement uh, in order to reflect a particular slant on what was happening and to suppress certain kinds of information would have been, which would have been seen as seditious or anti-national because only it would have the larger picture in mind and the larger interests of the population as a whole in mind. Now, obviously, this may have been true for a relatively small period of time when the country was newly independent. But if we pretend to be a democracy and if we pretend that the people have a say in the governance of this country, obviously, this is antithetical to that idea completely. It is important that everyone get the opportunity to speak up at all points about the information that's important to them and not just when an election is happening and you have to vote, right? So that tussle has actually been going on for nearly the entire period since our independence. And there was a little glimmer and successive committees set up by the government of India have in fact recommended at multiple levels, uh, starting with the Chanda committee and then followed by the BG Varghese committee in the 80s that government control over the media 
and government control over the news should actually be loosened and relinquished. But successive governments over the, this entire period have actually not taken that matter up and have actually let that hang. And even after the passing of the Prasar Bharti Act in 1990, though the media eventually went on to be liberalized, private players entered the picture and eventually community radio entered the picture, the control over news has somehow never quite gone away and it continues to be the preserve of the government. And that also brings to the point that this is especially discriminatory because this ban is only on the broadcast of radio, which the government justifies as saying that due to its wide reach, the damage control might be difficult and it might promote anti-national elements and sensationalize of sensationalization of news. Where sensationalizing the news is concerned, I think that's rumor mongering of the worst kind because really speaking, I mean, radio is as much a medium as television or a newspaper or any kind of print publication, then why should radio specifically be discriminated against, especially with the establishment and a community radio policy in place, which allows the creation of local radio stations servicing the grassroots? I think you have correctly said that there is a fear that radio has such wide reach. And in fact, to a large portion of the Indian populace, radio continues to be an authentic source of information. A lot of communities you go to in rural India will still say, if, if you've heard it on the radio, then it must be true. At many significant historical milestones in India's history, for example, Mrs. Gandhi's assassination in 1984, I remember very clearly that people would not believe the rumors that were spreading or even some of the flash news that was being published by newspapers till it finally came out on the radio, on All India Radio and the BBC, which were seen as authentic. If it came on radio, it was the truth. I think there's still a fear in political circles in India that radio is a truly people's medium and that if people start speaking out on radio and are given total license to speak up and make news on radio, then there will be absolutely no control over the narrative in this country at all and that it will get out of the control of the political classes and truly democratize the media. I think that's really what underlines the lack of news on radio. So, Professor, I want to ask you, how does this ban affect communities at a local level? Well, all over the world, news constitutes the central function of community radio. And in fact, if you think back about the origins of community radio in Bolivia and uh, Colombia in the 1940s, it was set up as miners radio at that time, where striking miners protesting for their rights actually began to use local radio to coordinate the movement between themselves and share information about what they were doing and how they were protesting between themselves. By setting up a community radio process in this country where news is not allowed or not central to the process, what we are essentially saying is we have defanged community radio in some ways and taken away the central purpose of its existence in the lives of the people it's supposed to reach. Is there any effort in the direction to revoke this ban? There have been a lot of discussions. Uh, I myself have been part of much of the advocacy that has reached out to the government to request a reversal of this ban. There have been multiple national consultations of activists and organizations where repeatedly uh, many of the recommendations that have emerged from those meetings have been a complete removal of this ban on news. In 2014, a public interest litigation was actually filed in the Supreme Court by the organization Common Cause to uh, protest against the ban on news and ask for its uh, total removal. However, the public interest litigation was later scrapped, if I am correct, on account of a technicality and has not been taken up since. So one is hopeful that such a public interest litigation will reach the Supreme Court again soon. I think, really speaking, there is no legal stance that the government can take if this reaches the Supreme Court, which would justify this because really there is no precedent for such a ban anywhere else in the world. We might be about the only country to ever have a ban on news on local radio of any kind. It's simply not justifiable in the modern day and age, especially when the internet allows many-to-many -many communication. And while India continues to be the king of internet shutdowns, the fact is that pretty much Social media allows anybody connected to the internet to speak up and have their say. To not allow it on a much older and more established medium like radio, which covers so many more people than the internet does, is completely unspeakable and unheard of.
I hope this discussion serves to increase our understanding of the medium of radio and also understand the broader context in which it operates in modern India. Thank you so much, Professor, for taking the time out and doing this interview with us. Thank you, Puneet. It was a pleasure being here.